and I take it and I cut it. This way, I can also catch it there. And I cut this way here. This as the weight's coming forward. As I block that, I cut this leg here. If he's not quite gone, I can always cut the second leg. Hi everyone, Carl Van Roon here at Van Roon Martial Arts. I'm here with a good friend of mine, his name is Sensei Chris Thompson, and he runs a Karate Dojo here in Auckland, New Zealand. Today we're going to be taking you through some sweeping techniques. Uh, we're going to be teaching you an outside foot sweep and an inside foot sweep to take the opponent down. Uh, these are based off karate techniques that we grew up doing together in a style called Ashihara Karate. Ashihara, if you're not familiar with it, is a derivative of Kyokushin Karate, which was of course founded by Masoyama. And a couple of his students, namely Hideyuki Ashihara and another gentleman called Jokun Inamiya, who founded another style called Enshin Karate, created this idea of um, using Taisabaki, which basically translates as body movement, to get a better angle for advantage to take the opponent down or to counter strike them. So we've basically been sharing like training for a couple of decades now. We took a couple of trips to Japan together, which was awesome, um, in 2007 and. 2010. Um, so, you know, it's a privilege having um, Sensei Chris in here today. He's a fourth degree black belt, um, runs his own dojo, as I said. It's great to be here with my karate brother, and um, we're going to get into doing some sweeping techniques for you today. Thank you, Sensei Chris. I no appreciate it. Okay, everyone. So, what we're going to do now is uh, Sensei Chris is going to attack me with a maigiri. In Korean, in Taekwondo, we call that apchagi, right? So, maigiri, apchagi, it means front kick, basically. And he's going to hit me with the ball of the foot to the uh, solar plexus or to my uh, the bread basket, the old bread basket, uh, and I'm gonna use a defense that we grew up doing, which is called a uh, gerambarai, which means a low parry. So I'm gonna hook his leg like this, and you'll sometimes see this in kickboxing and K1, you see it in Kyokushin type karate as well, and then I'm gonna show a basic sweep, which is gonna be to the outside of his leg, and I'm gonna use a hook, I'm gonna turn my foot into a sort of a hook shape by flexing my ankle and my toes up towards my shin. Now, if I was to parry with my right hand, like this, I'd end up on the inside. Now, there's a couple of downsides to that. If, if I end up on the inside, he can follow up with, say, his right hand. Let's say his right hand, so I can walk into that. <clears throat> Another downside is if he were to change it to a high kick over here, he could catch me with that high turning kick or high roundhouse kick, because I'm blocking on the inside, I'm exposing this side of my face. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work to the outside of the kick. So as he comes through here, I'm gonna block this side this way. And I'm gonna catch his foot and lift my elbow nice and high. So give me a open up sensei cross. Just give me a little bit of a kick like that. Just come. So I'm come through this way. I'm gonna turn his back and I'm gonna check the shoulder with my with my right hand. And I'm gonna go to sweep through here. I'm using the base of my shin and I'm I'm pulling my toes up, flexing my ankle up to sweep his leg. In uh, Korean, we call that suro chagi. So in ITF Taekwondo, that's the term that we usually use, suro chagi. In Japanese, they call it an ashibarai. And you know, of all the different martial arts that use this type of sweeping, I think um, traditional karate does it really, really well. Um, let's have a look at that one more time. I'll show you both sides. Let's just repeat that process again. So he's going to do my giddy, I'm going to block here, and I'm going to sweep here. If he does the, uh, the right leg, I'm going to do the same thing with him, but with the opposite hand. Notice that I keep this hand up, so if he did a high turn and kick, I've still got this hand up. Even if he kicks through here, I'm not sure which one it is, it's fine. If he does what we would often call a sort of a, like a question mark kick, if he comes through like that, even if I drop this hand, I still got a hand up. So he kicks through this way, and I take it, and I cut that leg out. I maintain control over him. This would be a really typical karate style way to finish that. He jumps up again. Not only can I sweep, off the front kick, but if he does what we would call in Japanese moashigiri, or turning kick, doryo chagi in Korean, if he kicks up top here, I can still take that across, right? If he was to kick to this side of my body here, I can still take that across. Even if he actually makes impact with my guard, so push into my guard, it's like this, I cross my right hand over the top. So sometimes I would call this a telephone block, like I'm speaking on the phone, and then I put the opposite hand across, like a cross pair. I try to keep my shoulder up a little bit, so I've got a bit of coverage there. So if Sensei Chris attacks me again, I catch it in that position. If he kicks again, I'm gonna take it through this time. I catch in that position. As I take that leg through, his weight falls onto that. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to cut that out there. You'll also know that I take, you'll also notice that I take some of the edge off the kick by pulling away from it. 
That's part of what we call in Japanese uh, mikiri, which is absorbent impact, or tai sabaki, which basically means like body movement, right? Body movement, more or less. So you'll see that my foot will pull back into what's very similar to where you'd see um, people in traditional Muay Thai stance with their weight on their back foot so they can easily check low kicks or teep. In karate, we call that a cat stance. And of course, in Taekwondo, it's called a rear foot stance, or duit bal sogi. So as he kicks, I absorb some of the impact by pulling back out of the way. I don't just stand my ground and take the full brunt of the kick. I pull back out of the way and I pull it through. It could be the front kick again. I pull it through. That can also work quite easily if, for example, he does a side kick. So if he switches stance, and he does a side kick over this way, I can also catch him there. I can counter this way once again. So that's the outside foot sweep. What we're looking to try to do is we basically want to sweep him when his weight goes on his front foot. If, if, if Sensei Chris steps in that way, he steps in there just as his foot lands. So once again, Sensei Chris, as his foot lands, that's when I want to take it. That's when I want to take his weight off that foot. If, if his weight is back, if his weight is back, it's very easy for him to just lift it up and escape. I need it to be when his weight is coming forward. When his weight is coming forward. So it's ideal after you've done a kicking defense. Okay, great. So just looking at one more variation now of that last sweeping technique. Rather than sweeping on the outside, we're going to come on the inside this time. We're going to come on the inside. So we're still going to hook our foot in this sort of fashion. So we're flexing up very much uh, similar to how we, we throw a side kick really. So flexing that foot right back so the toes are coming back. We're creating a hook that's gonna go around the back of his leg. So if he's um, back in a conventional sort of fighting stance, let's say he's got a bit of a cage guard up, let's say his attention is maybe high, right? Or he's covering in some sort of fashion. I might not necessarily be using a slap. This could be a hook, uh, it could be a body rip down here. You know what I mean? Um, but I'm, I'm keeping his attention over here. And as I, as I'm throwing these shots, I might shift my weight into a position where I've got enough weight on my right leg that I can sweep using this foot easily. So if I'm going to throw a couple of shots and then I step out this way so that I'm not directly in the firing right, line for his right hand. If I throw shots directly here, bang bang, let's say he's covered up, and I'm throwing direct shots this way and he throws a right hand and I try to sweep, I'll eat it. So one thing that's important is to use some of that Sabaki that we talked about before, which is about cutting angles. So in this case, maybe I occupy him with like a, a long hook or perhaps a jab, something to keep him a little bit occupied, and I take an angle out here and I sweep that out. So I could be throwing uh, the, the left or the right, stepping off the line. So if a right hand comes back to me, I clear that. I clear that. I could, use a, I could use a forearm block or I could use a knife hand to just clear that. I keep my other hand up and I get outside the line of his front foot and I sweep him. In simple terms, if I was just going to sweep him just straight up the spot with a basic sort of a, um, a set to it, if he just relaxes, I'm just going to step this way and hook my foot behind. I'll get off the line and I'll hook here. Just get used to that. You notice I cling my foot to his leg. I don't kick straight across like that. If I do that, he can sometimes just lift it up and over, you know? If he puts weight on it, if he puts weight on it, once he realizes I'm trying to sweep it, he can, he can take it away. So what I often do, whether I'm sweeping from the outside or the inside, is I sweep it and I keep my foot against it and I lift it a little bit upwards, like, like so. A little upwards. Now see how his legs have widened out? I could take this one and it's sort of an upwards lifting action. I like to use the base of my shin. It's something that's really common in styles of karate that we who are practicing like Ashihara Karate or Enshin Karate, which are um, both sort of derivatives of Kyokushin Karate. And um, the founders of those two styles, Hideyuki Ashihara and uh, a gentleman called Joko Ninomiya, they had, a, a, I would say, a vision that Kyokushin Karate, I mean, as great as it is, a lot of it is about standing face to face with the opponent. And what they wanted to achieve is they wanted to achieve um, more strategy and positional um, movement to get an advantage. So we're talking about uh, instead of being directly in front, throwing shots this way and kicking, taking yeah, exactly, taking a, taking an angle and perhaps grabbing the guy's um, doggy, kicking, kneeing, or sweeping. 
You know? So there's, there's a real emphasis on takedowns and throws and sweeps. And one of the ways that they would sweep is with that base of the shin. As a person throws a kick, uh, as a person is recovering, um, you can even, in traditional karate, you know, uh, even uh, ippon kumite or point, point sparring style stuff, you'll often see people uh, bouncing this way and take, a, take an angle, take an angle off to the side, throw a, throw a gyakuzuki, and on the retraction, they'll already be sweeping through like this. They'll already be sweeping through, ready to finish with a counter. Sometimes they're just trying to distract with the lead hand or with the gyakuzuki to get the sweep. They could either go out to the side like this and come from the outside as I just did, <coughs> or the opposite, they could be, for example, if I'm in South Pole, coming with the reverse punch this way, gyakuzuki this way, he pulls back, he shows his own gyakuzuki, and I sweep him as he lands. The principle, once again, being about trying to get the weight to go on the front leg of the opponent. So that's sweeping from the inside and the outside. Let's have a look at the detail now of where we actually place the foot. Yeah. So if I just get uh, Sensei Chris to just roll up his gi, bogey leg, that's great. I'm gonna sweep, I'm gonna sweep in a fashion like this here. So the base of my shin is basically behind his Achilles or the base of his uh, calf, right? So if he puts a bit of weight on that, if he puts a bit of weight on that, and I get an opportune angle, it's very difficult to do if I'm directly against the front like this, because he'll resist that. If his foot is, say, a little bit more inside here, and he bends the weight on that, I'm going here, I'm looking here. So if I was to, say, grab his gi, I would sweep behind the leg, and I'm creating a hook. I don't leave my foot down like that, so it can brush off. I sweep up like this. So if I go, it makes it very easy for me to sweep. So thank you, Sensei Chris. So let's say that he throws, say, a, what we would call it, uchimomoguri here, okay, and he goes for that. And I dodge that, right? Again, he kicks me here. Good, again, Sensei Chris. And I cut this way here. Or perhaps he throws a maigiri with his, with his left leg here. As I block that, I cut this leg here. If he's not quite gone, he always cut the second leg. And normally, we would do a todome, which is a finishing technique, this way with a reverse punch. Really classic karate stuff. Okay, so that would be for the outside. What about the detail on that inside sweep? So he's got that foot forward. This time, rather than being here, I, I kind of want to be in a position where I'm more around here. So if he had his foot this way, think of any time that he would get his foot that side. It might be when he's throwing, for example, he's about to set up to throw a reverse punch. So he steps, he steps a bit open to throw like that. So his foot's going to travel in that way. And as the weight goes onto it, I pull it with me and I take it. I don't just kick across. I want him to overcommit so his weight falls forward onto that sweep. So if he's stepping back a little bit, just very, very slow motion. He steps forward, he's going to punch me here with the right hand. Bam, right? So we'll take that back foot, reach for me, sense and cross. Bam, perfect. Look, he's got that gyakuzuki, he comes again. All right, so he steps forward and just as the weight's coming forward, he ends up completely falling into it. It's that real classic martial arts principle of using the person's force against them. You know, something that we strive for. And a lot of these sweeps are about timing. If I time it slightly late, it doesn't work well. So if we go back to, for example, the, the example with the uh, front kick. He comes with the front kick forward, right? And if I let his weight get settled, then when I go to kick it, sometimes it's not as good. But if I can get it just in that moment, where the weight is about to come onto it. It's just falling onto it. You know what I mean, don't you? Yeah. Mm. Just when the weight's about to come onto it, and he's anticipating the ground, maybe his foot has just started to brace. So he's just started to get the, the weight onto it, and just as he's about to think it's gonna, it's gone. It's like if you've ever, have you ever been walking on the street, and you step off, like, um, you step off the sidewalk, but you don't realize that there's a change in level, and you kind of go, and then you like, jar, jar, jar yourself. It's like that feeling, you know? It's like somebody literally taking the floor out from underneath you. Your foot is looking for stability, and it's suddenly gone. So it's a real kind of a, it's like a finesse move, you know? Um, I think it makes you feel quite silly when people pull it yeah. off quite well, right? <laughs> yeah. So, folks, that's some detail on the um, ashiburai, or jiku ashigiri, as we call it in Japanese for those that come from a karate background, karate. Um, and as I said, 
these, te these techniques all feature in ITF Taekwondo as well. Um, being a, um, well, really a brother art or a sister art of karate. And in Taekwondo we call it a surochagi. Yeah, surochagi. I believe it's first featured in the fourth degree pattern, Moon Mu. So yeah, look out for that. That's that sweeping technique. I hope you've enjoyed this video, folks. Uh, please make sure that you subscribe and comment on this video. Let us know what you thought. And thank you again for tuning in for Veteran Martial Arts.